G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wildcard. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep. Uh, I can't wait for Sir Eddie, my dad, to come home and whip Australia once again. 3-0 for the new, 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 new name? R rename? Renamed Cook's Cup. It's called Ella's, Ella's something. I have to look that up. But they renamed the cup. And uh, yeah, I found as I was trolling through the internet, I was gonna make a video like this anyway. I found this little game where you can select your Wallabies starting 15. <laughs> so we're gonna do that and I'll uh, give you my thoughts on some of these players based on their performance in Super Rugby. First up, the tight head props. So news came out, Tanella Tupo, as much as we would like to have him at the tight head, he's out injured. So he won't be a tight head prop position. Scott Co loose head. He has been pretty good for Brombies actually, especially in the final few rounds of the Brombies. I, I, from memory, I think he was starter for the Brombies, so he actually played better than Sleepers. So he's probably gonna get the bench position for the loose head prop position for me. Uh, Point Fianga Fa Mu Silly, the Rebels tight head prop. He's very very physical. He's very big. He likes to carry the ball and he runs really hard, but I do have a thing, a concern that his defense might not be there and sometimes he's a little bit reckless. He's being a little bit like penalty prone. So I might have him on the bench as the reserve tight head prop for the Wallabies. So on the reserve props, I have Scott Sio and Pauline Fayenga Mosili. And the starting tight head, I have Alan Alatoa. He's the most consistent guy. I think he might have a bit of injury. But he's the most consistent guy for the Brumbies at a tight head position. World of experience, a tight head prop. And with Sinclair injured for the England side, I think Alana Toa will have a... Yeah, there's a few injuries in the tight head position, but I think Alana Toa will be just fine going up against, I don't know, Bevan Rudd or whatever the whatever guy they're going to put in the loose air position, I guess. No, actually, they have um, Makovin Apollo back. So Makovin Apollo will be at loose head prop. And who's going to be the tight head for England? Um, yeah, but the Al Alatoa will be tight head for me, starting position. And Angus Bell, the best loose hair prop in Australia by a nautic mile. This guy is so good. He wins scrummaging, he gets penalties, he turns the ball over uh, against Kiwi sides, no less. And he's a high runner, very few mistakes, high work rate. He's like... 21 or something 22 but he looks like he's 31 he's as experienced as big as good as you can get for loose head position i'm very happy and so for me and uh alana toa gets the tight head position and then angus bell gets the loose head prop position for me at the starting and the next up we got the locks the hookers uh the hookers hasn't been great to be honest for the wallabies Locky Lonergan will be fine coming off the bench uh Fayenga, I like you can see two out of the three hookers are the Bromby selection. I think there's really not much options here. Fayenga R will be the starting hooker for me. Lucky Lonigan brings a lot of energy coming off the bench, but his accuracy in the lineouts is a bit lot lower than Fayenga R. Fayenga R much better. Uh, lineouts, lineout set piece play, much more clinical, and also the more as well, much more steadier in the more, much better. Better body positioning in the more as well for Fayenga R. Ah, so for me, the lineout it's a key, key, key factor for this game as well. The English lineout is quite good. They they have a few lineout jump up options like Maro Itoji, uh, Colin Laws are both super, super good at stealing those lineouts. So having that, uh, yeah, I'm actually yeah having Lonigan coming off the bench maybe just for like ten minutes in the second half. I'm very concerned about um, his throw. For Loki and Onigan. Otherwise, Loki is really like energetic, brings a lot of hard running. Um, but yeah, it's just the set piece execution. I feel like Fanga Eye is probably way better and much, much more needed for the for team like England with their uh, with the locks in play. So next up, so Loki and Onigan will be the reserve. Fanga at the starting position. Uh, oh, let's go back. So next up, we've got the second rowers. Second rowers again. The line of set piece is really, really important for, for the Wallabies. For me, Matt Phillip is the number one lock, locking position. While I was playing for the Rebels, the Rebels hasn't been great this season, hasn't been pretty poor, but Matt Phillip's set piece was okay. 
last year his performance in Wallabies was quite good. I was really happy about his progress in the Wallabies last year. So I want to see more of him this year. I want to see how much he has progressed. Uh, the Rebel season has been pretty much a write-off for him. I feel like he was, yeah, it's, the, the, the Wallabies is a much bigger stage and better place for him to develop. So I want to see Matt Phillip in the second row position starting. Uh, Nick Frost potentially getting a debut for the Wallabies, maybe off the bench. Um, I think no, I think he had one game maybe before. Jay Halloway, another new new face for the Wallabies as well. Uh, so the second locking option for me is Darcy Swain. The locking options is a little bit thin for the Wallabies, but Darcy has been really good for the Brumbies. Again, the set piece, the more has been brilliant. The lining options are pretty safe for him with Fanga in as a pair combination for the Brumbies. So I'm pretty confident with him in the lineouts to be able to compete and to get those more set piece going for the wallabies it is a little bit little bit of a bit of a rough spot here i do feel like a little bit of a potentially yeah if the line outs don't go well this could be a this could be a yeah this could be a bad bad day i think if, if i'm eddie jones i'd probably be targeting the wallabies line out a little bit so next up the loose wall position now here we have abundance of talents here and i feel like obviously michael Hoover is by far the best Open side flanker here. His work rate is exceptionally high. He's worked and improved on his carry running game as well. So a lot of times he finds himself in space, finds himself in the right positions, link up with his players and be able to read the play uh, much better than a lot of the number sevens in the world at the moment. That's a, a new skill that Hooper has developed in like recent, like yeah, probably around the last 12 months or so. So Hooper for me, uh, combining with his super high work rate and breakdown skills, it's obvious. This is obvious, obvious choice for the open side flanker position. On the blind side flanker, there's a few options that are quite good. I feel like Pisamu could be a good option, a blind side flanker, but I do feel Pisamu, his performance coming off the bench last year, that energy, that physicality that he brings coming off the bench as a finisher is much, much, much better, much, much more valuable for the team so i feel like someone like harry wilson would be a better start at the blind side also as an extra line out jumping option harry wilson uh, and also the england does play corny laws in the blind side position as basically the third lock so having that i feel like having harry wilson in that blind side position giving that extra weight in the pack giving that extra size and extra line out option is much better suited here for for the wallabies and having peace armor coming off the bench to bring that speed and energy to try to finish off the game uh in the in the in the second half in the late in the second half will be really more more valuable than having him starting at a sixth position to be in my opinion also peace uh most likely probably gonna come on at eight position as well and so number eight position rob valentini is my guy physical big fast runs like a center and uh yeah as much as you can see he has shown a little bit of handling issues like late in the season but i feel that's just probably just like having a bad you know having a bad few days but overall exactly what you want physicality like i said the england number eight they have basically a number seven at eight they have uh what's his name tom curry a number eight despite the fact that tom curry is a seven so they have a mobile seven uh, at the eight position something that i feel like yeah, uh, I've, I could almost put Simi Pisamo there for that reason. Samu there for that reason. But I think Rob Valentini match up just fine with the size as well. Um, so yeah, Rob Valentini for me at number eight. Pisamo on the bench for me. And uh, yeah, that's my selection for the four pack. Now the back line. First up, scrum half for me. There's no, there's no option here. Tate McDermott starts for me. He has been like the spark for the Reds in a lot of the games. The Reds season has been pretty flat. And a lot of the sparking for the team is from Tate McDermott. He works exceptionally hard on the field. He creates a lot of opportunities. And it's just sometimes maybe a little bit rushed, a little bit too much. Like for club rugby, it's really good that he tries to lift the tempo of the game. But in international rugby, maybe just a little bit steadier will be um, like, you know, not like, a change in tempo would be a lot better for him for for international tests instead of just operating in that one high speed that he typically does in super rugby but i think tate mcdermott does bring more speed and energy than the other option nick white i have nick white coming off the bench nick white um pretty solid season he played 
worse at the start of the season and he got much better later in the season. Nick White is a little bit of a thing where he likes to stir things up on the field. I don't really like that. He goes around and tries to pick fights and tries to, you know, push people's buttons. I don't really like that. I personally think that you just get out there, keep your mouth shut, um, and try to physically and mentally outgun, outmuscle, and outwit your opponent instead of trying to, you know, do these shoving games and try to, you know, hold the ball and not give it to the opposition. I try to, like, delay the game. I really don't like that. <clears throat> I feel like that's just... Yeah, that's kind of unsportsmanlike for me. So I have Nick coming off the bench with that experience. Jake Gordon, also very good for the Waratahs. I could probably put Jake Gordon on the bench. Um, yeah, that's it's, this is kind of like difficult option. I feel like maybe Jake Gordon could also be an option for the bench. Um, I think Nick is slightly better because Jake Gordon is more of a traditional style of 10. Well, it's a dish or some... Yeah, I think... Nick is a little bit better because England does like to play a more steady style. They, they, the number nine position for England is a little bit lacking because Ben Yance has opted out of this tour. So they don't have that experience coming to the bench for England. <clears throat> so they're going to probably have like Rafi Kirk coming off the bench. And uh, who is it good they're going to start? That other guy. Um, I know his face. I can't remember his name. Um, but anyway, England's going to have a pretty inexperienced nine position. And as a result, I feel like having Nick coming off the bench with that extra bit of... And also both of their nice are just like very kind of traditional style. So I feel like with McDermott and Nick White bringing that flair, bringing that tempo, that's somewhere, that's like a weakness that England might not be able to handle. We saw England really struggled against France in that night spot with Dupont playing a lot of high tempo flair out of the night position. So I feel like bringing in Tate McDermott and Nick White in that position will really... Put a, put a bit of a screw on the England side in that spot. Uh, 10. This is another really difficult decision for the Wallabies. The number 10 spot, so Quaid has been playing in Japan. So again, I don't watch the Japanese rugby. I just don't know how what form it's going to be in. I feel like the first game, I'm going to start James O'Connor because he's just steady, uh, really, really good leadership. And he had a bit of leg injuries though, so I'm not sure how well he is. If he has, if he's coming onto the field with like, you know, half of his leg strapped, then don't, don't play him. I would just play Quaid. But if he's, he's 100%, he doesn't need like, you know, ex, ex, what do you call it? Extreme amount of strapping on his right leg. I will play him at 10. Because he did look like he was struggling a little bit with his speed, with that leg, uh, leg injury. That he's kind of carrying. So actually, maybe I'll just put Quaid in there for, for the safekeeping. Because I feel like James O'Connor would be the better option. But he has that leg injury. I feel like probably better just to play Quaid to be safe. And Quaid has shown a lot of development last year. A lot of growth. Uh, he's taking care of himself. Taking care of his body. His goal kicking is a lot better now. And he's just... Yeah, accuracy is high. And got rid of a lot of the bad habits. And really... You know, calmed his temper a lot more. I was very impressed with his performance last year. So I'll probably start Quaid at 10 and have, have uh, Nolo Seal on the bench. Nolo Seal has been, uh, had a like quiet start of season, but he's really came to form late in the season as well for the Brumbies. So I'm actually happy with Nolo Seal uh, at 10. He does show like, still show a little bit of issue handling pressure, high pressure. Sometimes he does look like he's a bit shaky under high pressure, but that just comes with age and time. So when he gets a bit older, that'll be, he just naturally get better at that as well. So I, I have a lot of CEO coming off the bench and Quaid at the starting position. <clears throat> so on the wing position. So this is again, another difficult position. Corin Betty, whilst he's exceptionally good for the Wallabies last year, I just don't know what form he is in, in, uh, in Japan. I, I do think his team was like in the finals in Japan. So he's not like, like, you know, he's definitely performing quite well for, for his Japanese side. But for me, I want to say in the blind side, number 11 position. Uh, so Andrew Callaway is another, another guy that's, as a result of playing for the Rebels, had a really bad season. Nothing too flashy. He did score some tries, showed moments of brilliance. But overall, very quiet because the Rebels team was just horrendous this year. And as a result, I do feel like Again, but last year as well, like Callaway was 
pretty quiet with Rebels last year, but he went to Wallabies and just completely lit the whole team on fire with the right of players around him. So it's it's hard to say. Maybe Rennie will see something, Callaway in training, and put him on the starting position. But for me, I will I will put um, Suliasi Vinavalu at the blindside winger position. And the reason being is he has been... His kicking game, obviously, we haven't seen any at all. But his running game was absolutely, uh, really amazing for the wall, uh, for the for the Reds. Every time he gets the ball, he looks threatening, consistently getting over the advantage line, and he's able to, you know, bring that league style where he's able to get over the advantage line and, you know, really get the ball free as well. Uh, and just putting him on the blindside wing, he doesn't really need to do too much defending work. He does. He did show a lack of a bit of a defensive liability a little bit, <coughs> but. I think if he having a blind side wing really shows a lot of his skill set there. And on the open side wing, I have Tom Rye for me is the choice for me. His kicking game is quite good for, <clears throat> for Tom Rye. His kicking game is quite good, which is going to be a big, big part of the game for the England side. Uh, Jordi Patea and Andrew Calloway. Yeah, I think Calloway's kicking game is okay, but I do think Tom Rye's kicking game is slightly better than Calloway. Jordan Patea don't really have a king game. He does have a big boot, uh, but I feel like his accuracy is a little bit low. Corn Belly, Corn Betty don't kick basically. So for me, Tom Wright to just match up the England's kicking game out of Marcus Smith, it for me gets that open side winger position. And also Tom Wright's in really good form. He scored a few tries. He did like fumble one over the line, but I think he learned his lesson not to try and put the ball down with one hand again. Always, uh, always a really good runner with the ball as well. Uh, aside from his kicking game. So that's kind of a bit star for me. Uh, I might have, yeah, I, the, the winger position is going to be difficult because you're not going to have anyone on the bench for the wing position. So this is a probably star. I mean, I could probably juggle Corn Betty in place for um, Suliasi, but that's just going to be based on what, tr like how he goes in training, I guess, and also Callaway. Uh, but for me, Tom Wright definitely gets that number 14, uh, that, yeah, number, sorry, number 11 jersey. Vinavalo gets number 14 on the blind side. So, um, for me, yeah, Tom Wright is... Yeah, I think Tom Wright is definitely going to be slightly better for the kicking. Calloway does have a kicking game, though. Hmm. Yeah, like it, like I said, it's a bit hard to decide how... To, to, to like, evaluate how good Calloway is going to be because the Rebels has been so bad this season. Uh, and it, it really didn't show, like... Reese Hodge didn't even get selected because how bad the the, the season was for the Rebels, uh, and it, it didn't look like, uh, yeah, I, I did struggle to to see any Rebels player being selected after that season, but Callaway does have a lot of talent, and um, no, I think this is what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go with uh, Vinabalu and Tom Wright for the first game because if there's an issue here, we can address it for the second game. But I do want to you know give these two players the the most you know the opportunities that they kind of like. Yeah, especially with Vinavalu, I really want to give him the opportunity to show what he's got in a big stage and then to see how he copes with it. And then moving forward, we'll have an idea of how he's going to go. Uh, Tom Wright, I do feel like he does have that better kicking game out of all the rest of the, uh, the wingers for that spot. Uh, so in the center position, now this is so, so, so good. I'm actually so excited about the Wallaby centers. So first up, Samu Kurevi is back. He's by far the best center. Uh, as he showed last year in the world, Inside center, he is absolutely a line breaking machine, and he's just able to crack over your line and then still offer the ball, uh, smack you to big tackle. Uh, just absolute like wrecking ball. So, Samu Kurevi, 12th jersey, locked in. Now, for 13 jersey, this is a, a bit of an interesting selection here. So, let's go. Hunter Baisami has been on and off the Reds, to be, to be really frank. He will be great as a replacement for Samuel Kurevi at the 12th position, but I don't think his play style... I did play a little bit outside center as well. I don't think his play outside center quite... Yeah, his like physicality didn't really fit that well in the 13th position. Uh, and also, he did have a bit of a... I think like a concussion issue or something, maybe? So, yeah, Sa Paisami misses out the 12 for me. So the 13 jersey is a bit of an interesting situation here. Len Iketel did brilliantly last year with Samu Kurevi as a pair. Like they were, they basically outplayed the South African 
the Springbox center combination, which is widely considered the best center combination in the world. So they outplayed that, like easily, easily outplay that. Um, and, and with the way the Wallaby is set up, let Nikki Tao does the kicking game out of the 13. So this is a difficult uh, selection as well. Samu Karuvi doesn't kick. And we I know for a fact, England's gonna kick out of this 13 position. Oh, actually 12 and 13 position now. Now that Owen Farrow is back at 12, they're gonna have two kicking options at 12 and Henry Slade kicks out of 13 position as well. So there's gonna be quite a bit of kicking game out of England from the 12 and 13 position. But I don't think the kicking game is that important out of the 12 and 13 position, to be really frank. Especially with the style that Simon Karevi brings. He's just gonna like run Owen Fowler over again and again and again. And it doesn't matter if he kicks the ball or not. So I feel like just bring that physicality to that 12 and 13 combination for the Wallabies is better than try to play the England's kicking game out of the 12 and 13. So for me, uh, I think the best ball runner at a 13 position is Isaiah Peresi. He is so damn good for the Waratahs. Again, that skill that he has from rugby league brings a lot of opportunities that he's allowed to open space wide for the players out wide and he's able to carve up space um, when he gets the ball. Every time he gets the ball, he's a threat. I wanted to, I was excited to see him debut last year for the Wallabies, but he like, literally got injured the game before he was you know, the night on the announcement of the Wallabies team last year, so it was really disappointing. But I can't wait for him to see him play. I really want to see this 12 and 13 combination, Simon Karevi and Isaiah per Peresi, two huge ball runners. And uh, yeah, the Henry Slade and Owen Farrell could be in for a world of hurt. And I want to see that. I want to see that. This could be one of the spots where the, the Australian team has a bit of advantage over the English side. Uh, on the fullback position, uh, this is no, no, really not much of a selection here. Tom Banks is by far the best fullback for the Wallabies. Uh, I do think that James O'Connor could be a fullback position as well, but he hasn't played fullback since his return to the to Australia, like what two years ago now, two three years ago now. So he hasn't played that position for quite a while. Whilst he does have the skill set for it, I do think that Tom Banks would be a better option for the fullback. Now on the bench for the for the reserve for the for the for the um, uh, for the what do you call it for the for the, yeah again so yeah let's <clears throat> Jordan player as well he I think he, he 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 always expressed interest to play fullback but I don't think he actually played that much fullback at all for the Reds I think he may have played like one game or something uh, but mostly he was on the wing so again I just just the experience the kicking game from Tom Banks the big boo from Tom Banks uh, we are going to be expecting a lot of kicking from England. I just think that Tom Banks is a no-brainer for the fullback position. Uh, now on the bench for the backs, uh, we've got... I think James O'Connor will be on the bench. That can... So Nick White is covering the ninth position. James O'Connor will be on the bench covering uh, 10, 10, 15. I guess he can cut 15 now. 10, 15 position and maybe the wingers. And then we... I probably put... Uh, what's his name? I probably put Len Nikitao as a, the third option to cover the centers for the for the fullback. Actually, yeah, Len Nikitao because Len Nikitao does have a better kicking game than Hunter Paisami in that fullback uh, in that center combination. And Len Nikitao did show much better combination with Sama Karevi as well. So uh, take off is is is, is press in the second half. Put Nikitao on. Uh, that'll be a perfect combination with Sama Karevi as they were shown last year. So that is my selection for the Wallabies from. 1 to 23. Uh, let me know your thoughts on some of the selections. I do feel like the back line for the Wallabies has a bit of advantage over the England back line, to be really, really frank with you. The Farrell, Henry Slade combination center is not that great. And yeah, I do feel like we have the advantage in the, in the running game. And the kicking game as well. Like the Wallabies kicking game is not that bad. The, with Tom Banks, a fullback covering that. Tom Wright covering that. Uh, I think the kicking game will be quite good to cover that front as well. The, the the one thing, if England is really smart, if Eddie Jones is really smart, he will try to put pressure on the tie five for the Wallabies, especially in that locking position in the lineout. Uh, put you know put a lot of pressure there to try to get those set piece over the Wallabies. The England do have a very good scrummaging. They showed that against Ireland, and yeah, so I feel like if England really tries to pressure the set piece over the Wallabies, impose their dominance there. 
that could be their their key to victory. But for the Wallabies, this what this center combination here is the the big 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 advantage for the Wallaby side. There you go. That's my thoughts, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching this video. I'm going to try to get back to sleep a little bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate being here. Um, special, special thanks to all the guys who pay a couple bucks with the join button down below. And um, yeah, it's tough times. And I really do appreciate every penny you could, um, you could help me with. And uh, have a good week, guys. I'll see you guys a bit later this week for the team lineups and uh, the reviews on the weekend. Cheers.